The Registered Practical Nurses Association of Ontario, we RPN, representing the voices of over 55,000 registered practical nurses, is raising the alarm after a new survey has found patient care is being critically compromised due to staffing shortages and the standardization of unsafe workloads. I'm not going to waste any time on the introduction today and get right to this very important interview with Diane Martin, Chief Executive Officer for We RPN. Welcome back to What She Said, Diane. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, I mean, I read this, so I mean, I know what you're going to be sharing, but it is alarming. So I'm going to let you just jump in and start sharing what you did find. Right. So uh, two years ago, we did a survey right in about six months into the uh, uh, pandemic, and we found that nurses were significantly struggling. And as time has gone on, and we the uh, pandemic is kind of, you know, come and gone in waves, we've noticed something very different happening in uh, nursing that is far worse. So we repeated our survey, asking key questions like, um, uh, what is your intent to leave the profession? Um, what is your mental health? Uh, how is your mental health doing? Um, what are your experiences with patient care? And found that the uh, problems in nursing have sharply increased. So you first did this survey two years ago. You've repeated it now. Were the results alarmingly different uh, than two years ago? I mean, we were just at the beginning of the pandemic and there was burnout then. I really can't imagine what you're looking at now. Yeah, um, we're looking at a, at, at a real exacerbation in a lot of things. Like for example, 37% had planned to leave the profession back then. And now it's up to just under 50% uh, are planning to leave the profession. There are uh, a sharp increases in the numbers of nurses, 80%, for example, who feel moral distress at the state they're leaving their patients in at the end of the day because of the staffing issues um, where they are caring for far more patients than they can care for safely. Those are the sorts of things that we're seeing increase, but there's some new things happening as well. Okay, so can you elaborate then on what is happening sure. now? So um, I think the pandemic really caused a, uh, uh, you know, nurses to consider leaving, but now that they are leaving, that we've actually um, experienced nurses who are leaving the bedside, um, what we're seeing is the nurses that are sort of left behind are having to do the jobs of two nurses and um, in many cases. And that's physically impossible. They are doing their best because nurses are so motivated by outcomes, patient outcomes, doing a good job. And so, of course, the very thing that motivates them is gone, plus the physical and mental strain that they are experiencing. But far worse than that, in my opinion, is when I hear a normalization of that. So I've been talking a lot about the normalization of unsafe workloads. Used to be back when I was providing bedside care, I worked in a labor and delivery unit. And if we had 10 nurses and 20 people showed up in labor, we'd figure it out. It was an abnormal day. We'd sort through it cry a little and hope it never happened again. Or our hospital would shut down the unit and say, you know what, we can't have this. Uh, we're gonna redirect today until we can solve this issue. But it was a huge event that we would talk about for months, remember that day. Um, now it's happening every day and people are starting to treat it as, as normal, which is devastating to nurses. And even more important is what I've noticed lately is treating abnormal the things that should be normal. For example, I'm um, suggesting that some of the shutdowns are happening because nurses are taking a uh, summer vacation when summer vacation is a normal part of staffing always has been. And now we're hearing references to the problem being nurses taking vacation. So it's an extension of that normalization in that they are now abnormalizing. Um, and, and I don't even necessarily blame the, nur the nurse leaders and the healthcare leaders that are right at the front lines because they're just trying to save lives as well. Um, I think that it, it's time we really addressed the actual issues. Before we get to the actual issues, I do want to ask you, in this survey, did you look at how nurses are being treated by 
the public as well, because I know that there are horrible stories of nurses just being treated terribly uh, by patients. And of course, you know, uh, I'm not even going to mince words on this. The government is treating them terribly. So has that was that brought up um, as far as the 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 actions of patients? This is something that you'd be hard pressed to hear nurses talk about because um, of our sense that we are there for them and we understand their frustration. Although some nurses are talking about that, we didn't ask about that. I recently tweeted a personal experience I had in Emerge um, where I saw um, real abuse being uh, handed out to the triage nurse from the people who were waiting. And yet her demeanor was lovely throughout. I mean, I, I watched that nurse and was so impressed with her, but we did not ask about the public. We did receive lots of feedback of what nurses are thinking, are, uh, the sense of abandonment that nurses are feeling from government. So then you talked, we're going to go back to addressing the issues. What are some of the things that need to happen to yeah. A, keep our nurses in the profession and improve the healthcare system? We're hearing about emergency rooms closing all over the place. Uh, so how are we going to fix this? Okay, well, first of all, I'm glad you brought up emergency rooms. Emergency rooms and critical care rooms are in dire situations. My daughter uh, has recently left the bedside broken heart but, um, because she couldn't take it anymore, but she was a critical care nurse. But just as an aside, I want to ask everybody to think about what it says to us as society that long-term care and home care and our most vulnerable people, the nursing shortages are just as great there but we're not hearing about them. So I just want to say that because I think that um, it, it's become very focused on critical care and, and eMERGE care. And it is everywhere and it is every nurse and it is every patient. And as a society, uh, the value we place on different types of nurses reflects the value we, we put on different types of patients. That's alarming to me. Um, but uh, as far as the solutions go um, and the answering the issues, nurses are very clear that um, for a long time now, they have not been allowed to negotiate their own wages and that they have fallen so far behind in pay um, because of the cost of living increases. And yet they are doing double the work. So um, it has become a source of some days outrage and other days hopelessness and a real loss of faith in the uh, uh, profession that they um, used to love and uh, a sense of being not valued. And of course we have Bill 124 that limits their ability to, um, to secure appropriate pay for what they are facing. And why that bill is still in place is a source of major confusion to me. Nothing has ever been more expensive than this nursing shortage. We have nurses who don't want to work anymore, being um, coerced to work, granted sometimes for time and a half, but, but they're exhausted and they're becoming sick. We have nurses who say, I've had enough. They leave, they join an agency, get paid up to double the amount to go right back and work in the same unit they worked in with the same, um, with the same uh, nurses they worked with, but with, uh, you know, a significantly higher pay. Um, all of this has to be paid for. And I can't think of anything that's more expensive than a nursing shortage. So why are we not doing everything to solve it? Starting with getting rid of that bill. It, it boggles my mind. And if someone has any explanation for me as to why this would be ignored um, for years, even in the light of the fact that we know this is going to get worse. It's very confusing. I am with you 100% on this. I am alarmed reading the results of this survey that you did. I want people to be able to find out more and keep on top of this, keep on top of their MPPs about this, uh, and obviously join you in your fight uh, to, to improve the system. So where can people find out more, Diane? Um, you can go to our website. Uh, our report is actually on our website if you want to look. It speaks to such things as it's time for the public to question, am I getting sick care? Um, it, all of the things that we, the calls to action that we think people need to take are all found in that report. It's on our website 
and uh, we'd love for you to visit it uh, and think carefully about all the aspects that are most concerning. Um, and we ask everybody to join us in our action. Thank you for joining me today. I really hope the next time you're here that it's under better circumstances, Diane. Thank you, Thank you so much for having me.